it's Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you like sewing and DIY videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I normally do thrift flips here on my channel and I don't typically make my outfits from new fabric, but I wanted to make something that represented my Malaysian heritage. So I made this two piece outfit from some batik fabric that I got while I was back home last year visiting my family. I love how this set turned out and it makes me so happy to be able to incorporate a little bit of home into this outfit, so let's get started. I got invited to an AAPI event hosted by YouTube and they just sent out an email saying there's going to be a Getty photographer at the event, so obviously I decided at the very last minute to make a new outfit. I'm gonna be using this batik sarong to make this outfit. You can buy pieces of batik fabric, but this one has a sticker that says Suda Dijahit, which translates to already sewn, which means that this piece is meant to be worn as a sarong. Here is a closer look at that gorgeous batik print on the sarong, which is basically a large rectangle sewed together creating this long tube. There are a ton of ways to wear this, but you basically fold the fabric and then roll the top over and you can secure this with a pin or a belt. This is part of an outfit called Baju Kabaya and you'll typically find it paired with a traditional blouse. I'm gonna start with the skirt and I'm going to be making a midi length wrap skirt because I still want it to have the feel of a sarong. And since this is essentially speed sewing, I'm going to be making a very simple skirt. No zippers, just a basic skirt with an overlapping front. I drafted the pattern that I'm going to be using, but I did find a free one that you could use as a base and I'll make sure to link it down below. Here is the pattern I drafted for the back of the skirt and here it is cut out. As you can see, this was cut on fold. Now I'll sew on the darts and it should look something like this. Moving on to the front, this is the first piece that will end up overlapping the second front piece. This is the other front pattern piece and here it is cut out of the fabric. To sew the skirt pieces together, I'm placing them right sides facing and then I'll sew these together along the side seams. I chose to use a French seam so that everything looks nice and clean. This is what the skirt looks like so far and I've already gone ahead and hemmed this edge here by folding over twice and sewing. But on the other side, because this is a curved edge, I decided to use bias tape to finish the raw edge. Here is a close-up of what that looks like. Moving on to the waistband. I'm just laying my skirt out flat so I can figure out the length that I need and for me that measurement is 35 inches. Based on that measurement, I cut out this piece that measures 35 and a half inches by three and a half inches. I did iron on interfacing to this for added stability. Before I sew this to the skirt, I'm going to fold this wrong side spacing and press creating a crease in the center of this waistband. And then I'll also press the seam allowance along one edge up as well. This is what it should look like and you can see the crease in the middle and the seam allowance on this side is folded and pressed. Next is to pin it to the skirt and I'm pinning the edge that is not pressed right side spacing to the skirt, working my way across. Now I'll sew these together and this is what it should look like at this point. To finish the waistband, I'm folding it right sides facing and sewing this edge together. Then I'll repeat the same steps on the other side. Here is what it should look like and using tweezers, I turn the waistband to the right side revealing this crisp corner and again I'll repeat this on the other side. As you can see here, the lining waistband is still not yet attached so I'll go ahead and sew this now and the skirt is almost done. I would normally hand sew the lining waistband for an extra clean finish, but I want to make sure that I get this outfit done in time, so I decided to just use my machine and here is a close-up of what it looks like on the inside. Moving on, I went ahead and hemmed the bottom by folding over twice and sewing, and last step is to add the closure to the waistband here and here. My initial plan was to make buttonhole loops for the waistband closure, but honestly, I feel like the ones I make on my machine look super messy. I think I just need to practice a little bit more. So I am gonna get them professionally done eventually, but for now, I'm just gonna sew on a hook and eye closure. For the top, I'm going to be using this top as inspiration. I love the crisscross halter, and I think that the batik fabric is gonna look really great in this style. I did draft my own pattern for this top and unfortunately because I am rushing, I didn't have time to film the process of me figuring it out, but I am currently working with somebody to try to digitalize my patterns and make them accessible, so let me know if this is one that you'd be interested in. This is the pattern I ended up with for one side of my top and here it is cut out of the fabric. I'm gonna start by making a few pleats along the top here and I'll sew these in place with a straight stitch. Here is a close-up of what the pleats look like before sewing, and here is what it should look like with the pleats sewn securely. Following the same steps, I went ahead and made a mirrored piece. I'm placing these pieces right sides facing, and starting from this point, I'll sew together along here until this point, leaving this open for the strap. 
Starting again from this point, I'll sew until this point, making sure to leave a small gap here for the strap. Here it is sewn together, again with these two points left unsewn for the straps. To make the straps, I cut out a piece of fabric that measures 14 and a half inches by two and a half inches. I'll fold this right side spacing and sew together along the top here. Here it is sewn and I've gone ahead and pressed the seam to the center of the strap. Now using a safety pin, I'm going to turn the strap over to the right side. I'll give this a good press and it's time to sew the strap to the top. I take my strap and feed it through the layers and then through this opening here. I'll sew this with a straight stitch, securing it in place. Once it's sewn, I use the strap to help turn this piece to the right side and this is what it should look like at this point. Now I'm taking the other end of the strap and feeding it through the opening I left earlier and again I'll sew this in place with a straight stitch. Here is what the strap looks like sewn on and next is to sew a basting stitch along this curve here, creating gathers to accommodate the bust. Following the same steps, I went ahead and made a mirror piece and this will crisscross along the top here, creating this halter silhouette. Then I cut out this waistband and this just needs to be long enough to wrap and tie around your body. I'm hitting these pieces right side spacing and I'm leaving about a 2 inch gap in between them. This will create a little opening in the center and you can make this as big or as small as you like. I'll sew these together and here is what the top should look like at this point. I went ahead and cut out my lining waistband and I'm just placing it right side spacing on my shell waistband, sandwiching the main layers of the top in between them. I'll sew this all the way along the top until I reach the end here, and then I'll sew the rest of this together as well until I reach this point. I'll repeat this on the other side, sewing a majority of the waistband layers together. Here is what it should look like at this point with the center part left unsewn. Now I'm going to take this section of the top and I'm going to roll it so I can fit it in between the layers of the waistband, and I'm going to pin the waistband layers together. I'll repeat this on the other side, making sure I don't accidentally pin the rolled section while I'm pinning the waistband layers together. Now I'm going to try to sew as much of the waistband as I can together, leaving this gap open here. Here is what the top should look like with the small opening in the center, and last thing to do is to sew this together. You can use your machine to sew this opening shut, but this is the last thing I have to do for this outfit, so I'm going to go ahead and hand sew it, and I'll be done! Here is a close-up of that opening hand sewed together, and here is the completed top. It is the end of the day, and I have never sewed so fast in my life, and I cannot believe I got this done, but I am so excited to wear this tomorrow. I wanted to make sure I got some good footage of this outfit at home because I get very self-conscious and awkward filming in public. I am so happy with how this turned out, and I cannot believe I finished this in one day. I think it looks really good as a set, but I'm glad I made separate so I can mix and match them with other things as well. Here is a little clip of the event, and here I am getting my picture taken, and to be honest, I really don't like the way I look in this photo, but I had such a fun time at this event. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I had such a great time at the event, meeting my fellow Asian creators, and just being able to connect with so many talented people. I think this last minute outfit turned out pretty great, and I cannot believe I made four videos this month. I will be posting more photos of this outfit on my Instagram, so make sure you're following me there at Little Toe. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this outfit, and as always, thank you so much for watching.